Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Yeah, we need to start on the floor because this is very big and heavy. I can't get it up on the table alone and I need to take it out of its case before we can have a better look at it. This is a Philips uh, receiver BX925A. I think this one is from 1952-53 and yeah, it is just very very old and very very special tons of functions and features and really cool range selector ooh we got some Okay, you need to pull. And otherwise, it's kind of locked. Okay, we got a really nice S meter. It is all the way to the right. It is very, very hard to read the text on the front panel due to the color and contrast they choose. What is that up here? Probably a level indicator or, or some other kind of tune indicator, maybe some other stuff is there. I've got some informations here about the different bands. It was used mainly for radio amateur band. I can see here a lot of radio amateur bands. Yeah. And what exactly is this N? And then there's a shorting plug here in the front it is all a little bit <laughs> where is it is this the main on off switch because there's another one here that also says on and off <sighs> so where the heck heck is the main on off switch i can't read half of noise limiter thingy well well time to open this fantastic boat anger yeah this is a worthy contestant to the boat anchor competition of this month let's look at the back of this unit we got quite a lot of um, probably input and output terminals, probably speaker. And there's a very special connector and uh, antenna stuff. Transmit relay. So at first I thought this was a transmitter as well, but it is a receiver only. So I think this is a few combine this with a transmitter then you can maybe disable the receiver when you're transmitting that's probably two different antennas and this is the label where it says the type number bx925a wow. it is in a huge insanely heavy case so i need to have it out of this case and then we'll see what is inside because it's 33 kilo the way it is here we are now inside i removed the cabinet and lifted it up on the table <laughs> this is big and heavy I mean, everything is made in very, very thick and stable materials. Uh, this is not going to fall apart. I definitely only need a boat now, that is for sure. So, that will be all the tubes. There are 15 tubes in this one. And, uh, oh yeah, one over here. There's probably a little crystal oscillator or crystal filter down there it's quite obvious this one is very old 
the design is just fantastic a lot happened since the 50s and 60s i see a lot of really funny things in this one for, for example this one this is in a socket and look at that socket but i think this is just a capacitor right 50 plus 50 two different voltages and two different what this is the how many milliamps it can handle at 100 hertz and 75 celsius in a socket i mean that is a little bit kind of special isn't it and we got really nice bulbs in everything so here's a bulb for this scale and then there's another bulb right here for 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 the main band selector scale look how nicely that is covered and then, then there's this uh, lens that kind of lights up a line so it looks really really nice I'm of course going to test that we've got tons of I don't know gearings and stuff but this thing here is what I find very very interesting it is a motor with a little gear here so I mean this is probably for automatic retuning or remote controlling or something like that right why would you have a motor mechanically moving the tuning see this is definitely the frequency adjustments and that would be the band selection and when you're in the right band see both of them moves so there's a you need to pull this at the same time as you are turning and that is a little bit stupid I think so that'll probably be variable capacitors and all sorts of tappings and we better just open this one and have a look and what is inside this this will be capacitors or no 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 coils filters that'll be all the different filters of course in nice uh, shielded cases and we also see some of them with uh, trimmers oh you see a lot of real bad corrosion and it's everywhere you look here it's just full of bad rust and this can't be good and that tube is just oh, probably cracked but what is that? That is a crystal or filter or something like that, right? This is something we need to have a look at. Carefully lift, lift this up and see if we can get it out. Oy, oy, oy. So now I am inside. the main capacitor for all the tuning and that is something <laughs> look at all the four different sections but i think actually we got more sections as well because this is divided into two this is divided into two and and so on and look at the different thicknesses and distances so this is of course the highest frequency band so they choose to put the in a way so it will cause uh, as little as possible um, problems between the different bands this is probably how it was looking a lot of years ago nice and shiny and now it looks like that see this little label here tells us a lot about all the different tubes so oh, let me put it this way so we can better see all the different um, tube labels we both uh, see the 
American and the European tube format. For all the crystals, uh, crystals is here and tubes and stuff. So that is a calibration crystal. That's probably the oscillator for that. And this is very, very loose in the socket. See, I can just pull it up that easy. That's probably not the intention. I tried to pull up those two tubes and they were supposed to be the same according to to this and they do not look the same in any way. I can't read the, the names and the numbers on them, but I can show you they definitely don't look the same at all. So this one is supposed to be exactly the same as this one. Just too bad we can't read what is on them. So that tells me somebody poked around in here and uh, changed some tubes and didn't know what they're doing. And there's another thing that also stops this project because we're not going to power this up. That is uh, definitely out of the out of the question. And now you see why. There was a uh, fire inside this mains transformer. For some reason, I just pulled out the fuse. It's two amp fuse. And of course, the, that one is exploded. So that just told me that I needed to see at least something that could be a possible reason for, for the problem. And you, you even see the the coating or the varnish inside side this, this um, transformer is just melted so imagine how hot this would have been probably somebody was poking around with the different voltage settings and did something wrong but that means uh well we can't power this up i'm sorry about that but at least we can see how it's uh, built anyway then So I took out all the tubes to see if I could find any more errors with the wrong tubes mounted. And so far I did not find any other errors in tube types and mountings. So far so good. I also took off the protective cover back uh, of this motor system. And here we go with this motor that is able to remote control or auto-tune uh, the frequencies and as you can see the motor got four windings so I think they are working in two and two sets so it will be able to go backwards and forward and uh, we got all the wires for the motor and they go down to some capacitors and it looks like the two big capacitors here they're just in, in parallel right that could be a little bit of fun to see if we could make this motor run. See a little bit of hand riding here. So that is something I'm going to... <laughs> I'm always looking after hand riding because you can see all sorts of uh, comments and stuff like that sometimes. I'm, I'm also going to try and power this up and uh, see how the light goes and how it looks uh, from the outside. This is also what I can do. And I, meanwhile, I figured out what that hole was. If you look at the shape of this, there is definitely a half transparent Philips logo missing. Because you can imagine this lamp down here will shine all this nice and bright. And with this we could have a nice and sexy logo here on the front in the middle of all scales and stuff that will look absolutely fantastic so that's definitely what is missing here uh, also I was looking a little bit here on the main selector because I was trying to see was this probably mounted wrong but it's not so far is what I can see um, this uh, plug is a little bit a, of a weird plug. Imagine uh, you needed to use this plug for something. So you need to bend up those metal things. And then 
when you close them again, they kind of crack off or break off, and then you destroy the connector. So why would you make such a bad, stupid connector design? It can only be closed one time. I mean, that is not super cool. Uh, the voltage selector was kind of locked with this ring. So when this is mounted, you can't pull out, can't grab at least. This is the voltage selector. And then you dial it in for a new voltage and then click it in. So that is how it works. And if you see up and down here, yeah. maybe somebody f screwed this up. I mean, this this main transformer is really badly, badly burned. It was so hot, one of the windings or the, one of the solderings came loose here. I think I forgot to show the bottom part of this uh, unit, so... Here we go, better late than never. I think this is some antenna connections and some transformers for for that. We've also got some coax cables here. This will be um, the inductor for some high voltage uh, filtration. I took away um, the capacitors and some of the inductors because I wanted to show you guys what is inside. So I will show you, show you this in a minute. I see a little bit of modifications and improvements. Some parts like this has been changed. Uh, this capacitor is definitely not the standard. This one is cracked. Uh, I mean also look at those capacitors this looks like fungus so this can't be good <laughs> yikes <laughs> gross and look at the pots so they're in shielded boxes like this this is of course very very good style i still haven't figured out exactly what is this short here is uh, is doing and this is the the band switch. Look how long that is. It's it's in the entire length of the the unit. That is how long it is. So that is all the different things it switches. I believe this is the highest frequency bands. And here we see the nice nice ceramic ones. Also got some really nice inductors here and and all that stuff. Really nice trim of cap capacitor here for a fine tune. Inside all those um, boxes or metal cans we saw on the on the top. I took out a few of them just to show you how different they are. Look how many inductors they are made of. And the winding style here is really, really nice. This cross winding technique is a little bit special, but this is to uh, minimize capacitance between the layers and this way get a higher Q factor. And they're all very, very different. Look at this one. See some really, really thin and then thick and then some wires that goes through. I mean, it is absolutely amazing the work that went into the design of all those uh, 
in doctors. And the unit is, as you've seen, full of them. And look at that one. With uh, two inductors side mounted and they are of course adjustable with a uh, screwdriver this is a very expensive uh, mechanical construction i think i showed you this capacitor in uh, in socket yeah i don't think i want to show you guys so much more i want to clean this up and be done with this unit so thank you very much so far i connected 6.3 volt to the bulbs on the rear side and look at the way that the optics see it it lights up a really nice shiny line on the scale so let's look from the other side that is a very very nice scale I really like that. Oh, by the way, the signal meter. I thought it was stuck all the way up here at maximum, but that is not how it is. This is how this meter is. And if you give this uh, about 50 millivolts, it goes all the way down. So that is how this meter works. And yes, this meter does indeed work. It is a super, super nice meter. I really like that. Maybe I can use this for something funny one day. Oh, and the motor. I tried to power up the motor. This is a classic three-phase construction. I'm very sure that I'm going to put in an AC signal on this one and that one. Then it goes in one direction. This one and that one then goes the other direction but this motor is very very stuck i mean if i try to rotate it here with my fingers it is just really really tough to move and that is why it's not working i did actually try to give this mains voltage and there is no movement whatsoever and uh so I'm probably going to try and, and lubricate this or see if I can make it run. It could be fun to see how fast this tunes or how it's actually working. I've been thinking a little bit, bit about this uh, the conical construction here to this rubber thing here. And then there's a spring at the rear that pushes this one towards this rubber cupping, coupling. I've actually push this back as hard as I could and now it's actually staying there so you see there's now not a coupling unless I do this then it is barely touching so the stuff down here moves quite freely but this one is just stuck quite a lot so yes it was right about the capacitor feed side We'll turn the motor left or right and see. Of course, I could make the motor spin. And the rubber, the rubber connection here between the two parts here, between the corner, corners and this rubber part is of course worn to a level where there is no more connection. But if I push a little bit on the back of the motor shaft then there is a good connection so yeah and it's super silent this motor so that was what I wanted to show about this little motor thing